Alrighty. Well, we did that great little test, Ords and I, the boat test, and you know, went through the whole rig originally. And you know what? The amount of people that have come to us saying, we want to hear more. Well, tell you what, now we've got 500 hours on the engine. We've done 7,000 miles and it's seven months old. So let's run through it and show you what we've done in that time. All right, starting with the trailer. So we've got a trans style under here, which is the best trailer I've used so far. And believe me, I've used them all. Starting up the front here, two spare wheels, full hub in there. Reason being that if you break down on the road anywhere, you're dead in the water, literally dead in the water. So I've got everything on there I can to make it easier for us. Everything underneath, it's all alloy and stainless. Um, obviously it's over 750 kilos, so it's fully braked. And down in here, everything's stainless as well. And this is a massive thing, because the one thing with trailers that's a real issue is that they sit. Everyone says, I'll oh, wash your trailer and stuff. Doesn't matter when you put the boat in, because it sits in the car park all day, every day. And for us, I think, you know, 200 days a year, that is a massive issue. Now, we're gonna put the boat in, but I should also add that we're actually redoing this vid because the other day we shot it all, did it out at sea, beautiful day on the water. And then guess what? AB and the boys at Mercury sent me check this out. Look at this. They sent, they call them accent panels. Look at that. So I've now got a silver streak through my Merc 250. But of course, we had to reshoot the vid because now it looks awesome. All right, let's put this boat in the water and let's go run this baby through and show you what we've done and what we've changed with this boat. Now, the boat has done, or the Merc has done, 550 hours now. We put 7,500 litres of fuel through it. So we've done some serious miles. But what I'm going to do is, we're going to do a run through the boat. There'll be a fishing report coming in. We're going to do a run through the boat, and then I'm going to go through what we've changed. So, starting up the front. Now, it is obviously a 650 hard top north bank. Being fully enclosed is unbelievably good. Like for me, it is the best thing because you're running all these electronics and all this stuff, and I'm so sick of it getting wet. Like in the past, there are no clears that keep you dry. Just let me tell you that. So, fully enclosed is the first time I've had it and I absolutely love it. Starting up the front, it's got an electric winch there from Lone Star. Now I've never had an electric winch before, but it is essential in these boats because the cabin is as wide as it can get, which means I can't walk around the front. Now, at the start, I thought that might be a slight issue that, you know, I want to access the front. I don't. Having this space between Ords and I, actually, no, I want to get a little bit closer for that. No, but having this space in here and having the cabin as big as possible is bar and none the best part and not being able to walk out the walk around the front is a tiny tiny sacrifice um just working down through the cabin in there it is really spacious and it's great for like we've been sleeping on board doing everything as you can see it's an absolute mess just zoom down there to see the one problem we get with a bigger cabin is that we put more crap in it now we're meant to be doing a video on the boat and I've just seen a patch of kings come up. We're gonna go and catch some kings quickly. Oh, oh some nice fish. The cabin could do with a bit of work. One thing about it is that Ords and I can sleep in there happily, so there is a lot of room, and as I say, we keep filling it with crap. Now we put a couple of clips in up the front to strap everything down. So on a rough day, particularly with camera gear, it rolls around and stuff, we're gonna put more clips in to lock everything in place. So coming back, obviously fully enclosed, you've got windscreen wipers. We do need to put rain -X on them on a regular basis, so clean them and rain -X them. It is something that, it is a bit of maintenance, but your visibility is a million times better. And of course, because Rob's set up so we can run fresh water through here, and you need to fill the um, reservoir regularly, all the time. There's been a couple of trips we've gone to sea and completely forgotten it. So, coming forward, we have changed this too while I'm at it. We put the black matting, originally we had white matting on there, but it reflected up on the screen and was damn near impossible to see. That was an odd special, because look how neatly it's cut. Bloody unreal. So, coming back, we're into the electronics. Now, of course it's Veruna. We've got the 295, which is running a 82B 2 kilowatt and an SS175 high wide, one kilowatt as well. Whilst over here we've got the TZ, the big bugger, the proper one. Now, this is running my radar, my GPS, and I've also got my WASP, which is my um, wide angle, like it's insane what we can do. For our marlin fishing and stuff, WASP is basically like 
Well, it's almost like having a sonar without having a sonar. So it's zooming out to the sides. And while they get a lot of this stuff they use in, in like estuaries and this side scan is great inshore, this is designed for offshore. So for marlin fishing, if I'm driving along and I mark bait, and I go, there it is traditionally you know, below on the sounder, I can look at that and go, oh, the bait school's over to my right or left. It is, it is a game changer for marlin fishing. Or you could get a Ferrino sonar, which is about $200,000, which won't fit in this boat. So for smaller trailer boats, this is insane. Uh, we've got the radar. Now I've got bird finding radar on there. So I put the big bugger in up top and it looks like we could take off, honestly. But it has become imperative and I'm, I'm still learning to find the birds, but we're picking up patches of birds. And the other day we're out, we marked the bird, drove over and the tuna under them. This to me is making like we, the technology is insane, but you need to learn to use it. Of course, we got the autopilot, best thing ever invented. I remember with Mark from Faruno he said, oh, we're gonna put autopilot in. I'm like, oh, I don't need that stuff. OMG, it is the best. So there's two things. One, you're running to sea. All I am is on the throttle. That's all I do. Just sit there, get your anger right, and just sit there on the throttle. So you're not as tired when you get to sea as well. And secondly, if you do spot those birds, you know, you go, I'm pretty sure I saw a bird up there. You go, what's the angle? Save, and you're on that angle. You can do all these fancy things with it. You can move around, do all these, you know, direct it off here on your GPS and stuff. We don't need to worry about that. I don't need to. I just want those specific, basic things that are really important. Um, it also has for its mapping. Now we should show you that because this is insane. And I love this technology. And I should also add, sorry, we've also got an SS, SS175 low. So I'm running four transducers in this boat. SS175 low runs through here. And can you believe that I'm now marking up to eight or down to 800 fathoms? I'm actually doing out doing the 82B. So the 82B and the SS175 low are designed for my deep water sword fishing, bottom fishing. And what we've been doing is as we're trolling around looking for tuna on top, is I'm sounding and finding bottom. The other day we found some new bottom in about 400 fathoms that's 80 fathom drops. like. It is phenomenal, and we're going to go and fish it and try it for swords. Now, I know it's outside the traditional depth, but we're trying new things, and it's because of this technology. Speaking of technology, one of the things they do is their mapping system is insane. So not only do you have the best mapping system for offshore, you can actually correct it as you go. So if we're under the bridge, I'm actually marking it up. If you have a look at this, look at this. Now, this is always going to swing in here. So here's the bridge. And look at that. So I'm actually, you can see where I've gone over. It's actually correcting and mapping it perfectly. All the red lines are us driving over it. But look at that. So there's all the lumps and bumps. And if you go this side, you can actually see, oh, go in a bit. So you can see there, there's the tunnel. So see it's showing it there. That's the tunnel there, there, bedge of it. Little holes and stuff. Like it is unreal what this can do. And of course you've also got the actual mapping system for offshore has changed it because when we've been sword fishing and all that, all of a sudden we're seeing so much more bottom structure, which is so important. I do worry a bit too, because with this technology, we are getting too smart with what we do and we're getting really good at catching fish. Okay, so steering station, I'm gonna get it, I keep digressing, is stock standard. I will raise this seat up a bit. We put the uh, mats down the floor to give you extra padding. And we've also got, Wes put the U-deck in, which has now had swordfish to 280 kilos on it, said tuna on it, said kiwis on it, and it's perfect for the dog to sit on. Like, look at that. It'll blow out with that dog, but she's happy. Look at that, it is dog friendly. So, it's been really good. The other thing too, is I find the sides a little bit high on this boat, but with that, with that, it lifts you up probably another inch or so, it just brings it up a little bit higher. Or it's, he's gonna talk a bit later on, because what we're gonna do, is I'm going to go through it and then I'm going to grab the camera forward, swing it round and get you to tell her perspective as well. So you get two genuine perspectives on the boat. And I should add on that, I bought the boat. This is not a free boat. I paid for the boat. I paid for the electronics. So it's not a freebie because everyone goes, are oh, you getting it for free? You get paid for it. No, you don't. We pay for this stuff. I picked the best because with my job, I have to catch fish to get the content. If I don't get content, I don't get anything. So it's essential that I get it right, get the best I can, so I can't go to the highest bidder 
and get a bit of money, I go to the one that's the right person for the job. That's it, so I can catch these fish. Got obviously your smart craft there, which is runs all my uh, Varado 250 down the back there. Unreals tells me how much fuel I'm running. It, it is really essential for what I do. And with this day and age where I can monitor the fuel consumption is absolutely vital. And you can see it in going, I oh, need to do your trim, you do everything. Of course, the throttle. It was interesting the other day, we jumped in and my brother's got an old, the old style, you know, old cable. And you're like, clunk, clunk clunk to what it is today and they're all coming out with it everyone's doing the same thing but to drive this i can swing this boat around i can swing back and forth mercury have done an absolutely brilliant job with the throttle lab it is unreal and i can't stress enough how good and how much this has changed and to make your fishing easier okay so what we're going to do is we're going to keep walking back and show you the stuff we've changed and what we're doing and how we're doing so just as a safety thing i should add in there Eperb from GME is there. Fire extinguisher is down behind Ords. Up the front, we've got a grab bag with everything in it, with all the safety gear. And most importantly, we've got safety gear for New South Wales and Victoria because they're different. So we carry extra safety gear for everything. And I should just say one other thing. We've got a pile oven down there. We didn't actually mention that when we went in the cabin. We've got lunch on. For offshore fishing, anywhere that's cold or anywhere you like hot food, a pie oven is essential. Best thing ever invented. Also, just look up, we've got the two, I'll probably take the cover off there for you as well. So I'm running two VHFs on it. Now, got the Icom there and the Furuno. First time I've used the Furuno and it is insane. It's expensive for a VHF radio, but oh, it's absolutely unbelievable. The only thing I'm gonna change is I'm running two 3DB aerials at the moment, or antennas, and I'm gonna bump one up to a 6DB. So the better the antenna you buy, the better the range out of it. And the range is okay, but I can make it better. And they're little things that are really important to going forward and making the boat better. So now moving back. So we've done the helm, done the cushioning. Um, the, the side pockets are okay. They're a little bit hard to get to in behind the seats, I'll be straight honest. And we do tend to, because they're quite deep, we do tend to fill them with crap, which is a standard thing we do. Coming down the business end, okay. So we've got the two helm seats, obviously, or the helm seat and the passenger seat. The helm seat has a tackle box, but on the passenger seat or on the port side, we've got it so it fits an esky, which is brilliant because I put in the Yeti 65, which is in there now, but I also bought a Yeti 125 and a 160, and now they all fit. So I could actually change it to the style of fishing I'm doing. So if we're doing today where it's chasing kings in the harbour where you only want your lunch in there, Small esky. They're doubled up. Oh, 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 holy shit, look at them. Hang on, I've got to go. Oh, look at that. Look at them. Oh my God, look at them. Oh, and I'm going to get the net for you. If we're going offshore and chasing bigger fish, like say bottom fishing or something like that, we can put the 125 or the 160 in for a bigger king or maybe blue eye or small tuna. And then of course I have the bags up the front to put the really big fish in. And I carry the ice in the coolers, in the eddies. Absolutely brilliant. And being able to chop and change for the right one, absolutely insane. So working down, Andrew at Melbourne Marine put the rod holders in, the upright rod holders, essential for what we do. Brings all your gear back and it keeps it relatively dry. Um, all the gaffs and everything are stuck up in the side there. I did put two extra clips in for the bait tank and for the small tag pole. And I should add, while we're at it, on the bait tank, I want to build put a net that fits into the top of that that clips into there. That's on the list. I've just got to find one that fits because it's not a very big area. Uh, just going, actually, may as well keep going on the bait tank there. Bait tank is awesome, nice and deep. Came with a pump that was too small, so we put 1100 or 1500, I think it's 1100 I put in there, so I had to update it. So down in Victoria, South Australia, and a lot of other areas, they don't need a lot of water flow. Yakkers and garfish and all that stay alive. For us here in New South Wales, we're carrying a lot of slimy mackerel. We need lots of oxygen. So realistically, a thousand litre per hour pump is bare minimum. And what everyone thinks is they want to aerate the water. You don't want the air, you don't want to aerate the water. You want water flow. The more water, let me say that again. The more water flowing through, the better. So the higher the pump rate, the better it is for those fish. Obviously you need, you know, needs the uptake needs to work and all that, but it's all about water going in and water going out. So. Going across to this side here, well, we might as well keep the stern going at the moment. 
we put two live slimy tubes built in into the back there as you can see there with the overflows down the back brilliant idea utilizing this space because that is an empty cavity we really need with australian made boats to utilize all these cavities same thing here this is an empty cavity we put two extra rod holders in there and then i ran down a bit of rubber tubing underneath so that they run straight down into the well which i'm going to show you in a minute um, we put in a second pickup so it comes with a single pickup if you buy them on these boats you want two pickups so one pickup is doing my live bait tank the other pickup i've got is running my tuna tubes or slimy tubes and my deck wash you can't run them all off one you need two so we're running two separate pickups for that swing around to this side we've got up under here all your battery panels which i love not being down the back further up is really good We've got a small knife and pliers and stuff set up on the side there. All the Yetis which are full of water, so we carry extra water. In New South Wales, you're meant to carry two litres per person. We're probably carrying at least double that. 